In last lecture, we saw a number of parametric spectral estimation methods that didn't really assume anything about the data. And for this reason, these methods are generally referred to as non-parametric methods. So in this lecture, we'll look at a different approach to spectral estimation, so namely the parametric spectral power estimation approach. And what this approach relies on is a model for generating the stochastic process of interest, driven by a stochastic process that we know something about, plus some unknown parameters that we wish to estimate from the data itself. So the estimation procedure in this case will be the following. So we still assume that we have capital M samples from the data, but instead of in directly trying to estimate the power spectrum from these samples, we in try, instead try to fit the model to this data or to estimate the parameters based on this data. And then once we have these parameters, we know everything about the model since we know the parameters and we know the driving process and we can therefore, at least in theory, compute the properties of the stochastic process x of n. So knowing the parameters will allow us to estimate or compute the power spectral density or the autocorrelation if we so wish. And since we know a lot about filters, we'll generally assume that the model that we have to deal with is in the form of a filter and that these parameters are parameters of that filter. So uh, one of the most or one of the more general filter types that we know is the general ARMA model. So the ARMA model is a filter based on a couple of time delayed samples, uh, one section of feedback uh, through coefficients, generally referred to as the autoregressive parts, and one feed forward part, which is referred to as the moving average part. And we have looked at this uh, type of circuit before. We know that the transfer function of this filter is simply the ratio between po two polynomials involving the coefficients a in the autoregressive part and the parameters b in the moving average part. And in principle, once we have the transfer function, we can take the inverse C transform of that and compute the impulse response of this system, which will allow us to compute the properties of this process x of n if we assume that we know the properties of the driving process e of n. So in order to make this tractable, we'll assume some properties of the driving process or the driving noise. And the property that we'll assume throughout is that the driving process is spectrally white, so that it doesn't have any spectral characteristics of its own. So all spectral characteristics of the output process x of n comes from the filter itself. So this assumption means that the power spectrum of the input process is equal to unity, or equivalently that its autocorrelation is equal to delta pulse. So once we have the parameters of the models, the a1 to am, or the, and the b1 to bm, b0 to bm, then the power spectrum of the output process can be obtained simply by taking the squared magnitude of the frequency response of the filter in question. And we can obtain that from the transfer function by just plugging in e to the j2 pi nu in place of z in the C transform, or the transfer function of the filter. And this follows from this... Uh, relation that the output process is simply the convolution between the input process and the driving noise, which means to say that the Fourier transform of the output process will be the Fourier transform of the impulse response equal to the frequency response of the filter times the Fourier transform of the driving noise, or in the spectral domain that the power of the output process is given by the squared magnitude of the input uh, or of the filter's frequency response times the power spectrum of the driving process. And we already assume that this is equal to one, which gives us this uh, expression. So in order to arrive at our spectral estimator, we need a way of relating the parameters of the model to the spectral properties of the process that we are observing. And one way to do that is to start with a difference equation that uh, relates the output process with the input process. So this is the general difference equations of the ARMA system that we have here. So in order to get uh, statistical properties of the process instead of the process itself, the trick is to take uh, this equation and multiply it with a time-shifted version of the output process and then take expectation. And what this accomplishes is that it allows us to turn this difference equation into an equation relating the autocorrelation of the output process, which we obtain after taking expectation, uh, with the parameters of the model and also the cross-correlation between the output process and the driving noise, which in this case can be written out directly in terms of the impulse response of our model or of our filter. 
And this gives us the so-called Yule-Walker equations, which relate the autocorrelation and the cross-correlation or the impulse response to the parameters of the model. So the way that the ARMA spectral estimator would work is that we would first obtain an estimate of the autocorrelation from the samples that we are given. And then we would obtain the, an estimate of the parameters by fitting those parameters to the Yule-Walker equations using our estimate for the autocorrelation function. And this Yule-Walker equations are defined for any time like k, so we would pick a finite set of k in order to arrive at the finite set of equations which would allow us to solve for the parameters. Then once we have the parameter estimates, we can obtain an estimate of the power spectrum by simply computing the squared magnitude of the frequency response of the filter for these particular parameters. So a question related to that. So if we have the Yule-Walker equation, which has stated uh, hold for any time like k, and we wish to use these equations uh, in order to obtain estimates or to solve for the parameters of the model, then how many different time lags k or how many different equations would we need in order to solve for the parameters of the model? So do you think that we would need capital M finite values uh, of k? Would we need 2m values for k? Would we need 2m plus 1 values or 2 times m plus 1 or m squared? Well, the correct answer is option number three. We would need 2m plus 1 parameter, 2 one plus m1 equations in order to solve for the parameters. And the reason for that is that in general, as we have uh, m, 2m plus 1 parameters of our model, we need as many equations as unknowns in order to have a unique solution to this set of equations. Unfortunately, solving the Joule Walker equations for the general ARMA model is quite difficult. So even though we see the parameters entering here and here, they also enter implicitly in the impulse response since they define the system and therefore the impulse response of the system. So in general, the Yule-Walker equations is a set of nonlinear equations that need to be solved for the parameters, and that is quite hard. So the way that this is usually tackled is by simplifying the model. And two ways of simplifying the ARMA model would be to reduce it either to the pure moving average model or the autoregressive model. So the pure moving average model is the one obtained by assuming that we have no feedback coefficients. So all the coefficients a1 to am are set equal to zero. And equivalently, the purely autoregressive model is obtained by assuming that we have no feed forward path for the time delayed samples. So it's only the time delayed sample zero which is allowed to be non-zero, so B0 is allowed to be non-zero, but all the other parameters B are equal to zero. And this simplifies the model in several ways. So in the first case, for the moving average, if we assume that all of the parameters A1 to AM is equal to zero, it removes this part of the equation. Equivalently, if we assume that we have a purely autoregressive model and assume that all the parameters B1 to BM are identically equal to zero, then that rem would remove all but one terms on the right hand side. So we'll first look at the moving average model and then in a later video look at the autoregressive models obtained by making these assumptions. So uh, in the moving average the parameters of interest would be the B parameters B0 to Bm and the difference equations would simplify to the following equation for the whole system which we can using the fact that the impulse response of a pure moving average model is simply given by the coefficients themselves between 0 and m minus 1. Inserting that into the Yule Walker equation yield the following set of equations that needs to be solved for the parameters b. So here we've been able to make this explicit assumption regarding the impulse response and therefore remove that from the Yule Walker equation. So what we have is an equation just involving the b parameters. So this is not a linear equation, so it's not trivial to solve, but it's a quadratic equation, which is significantly simpler to solve than the general uh, ARMA equations, or the ARMA uh, Yule-Walker equations. So the way that the moving average model uh, parametric spectrum estimation would work is that it would, uh, as the general ARMA model, it would obtain an estimate of the autocorrelation Rx of k from the data again. Uh, 
and we could pick any estimator. So for instance, we could pick the same estimator that was used for the periodogram as such. Then we would obtain the parameters B0 to Bm or estimates of these parameters by solving the Yule Walker equations, inserting our estimate for the autocorrelation. And then as before, we will obtain the power spectrum of the output process by computing the squared magnitude. And in this case, since we don't have any feedback parts, we only have the numerator of the transfer function. So that expression simplifies as well. However, for the moving average model, one can see that once we have the parameter estimates, one can use the fact that the moving average is an FIR, or finite impulse response model, in order to compute uh, an estimate of the autocorrelation, and it would give us the following equation. And now we know that the parameters of the model were obtained by matching this quadratic equation to our uh, obtained estimate of autocorrelation. But the only difference of using the model to extend this estimate would be that we would be making an implicit assumption that, auto, uh, that the autocorrelation is identically equal to zero past the model order. And this follows from the finite impulse response property of the moving average model. So if we look at the power spectrum estimate, which is obtained uh, equivalently by taking the Fourier transform of the autocorrelation estimates as predicted by the model or the following equation, we could simplify that by using the fact that the autocorrelation estimate turns to zero past the model order and we would get the following uh, expression for obtaining the power spectrum using the moving average model. And the benefit of this is that we don't need to explicitly solve for the parameters B simplifying the expression. So the moving average estimator is equivalent to taking a partial Fourier transform of our power uh, autocorrelation uh, estimate like so. So we've seen that the um, power spectrum estimate based on the moving average model is obtained by the following expression. However, this can be recognized as something that we have seen before. So in fact, it is equivalent to one of the spectrum estimators that we saw in last lecture. So which one do you think it is? Do you think that it's equivalent to the periodogram? Do you think that it's equivalent to the periodogram with the Bartlett or triangular window? Would it be equal to Bartlett's method with a rectangular window? Perhaps it would be equal to Welsh method with a Hamming window? Or do you think that it would be equal to blackman tukes method with a rectangular window? So the correct answer is option number five. It would be equal to the blackman tukey method with a rectangular window. The reason for that is that the blackman tukey method was based on applying a window directly to the autocorrelation function. And truncating our autocorrelation function estimate is equivalent to applying a rectangular window. So therefore, this moving average based spectrum estimator is equal to the blackman tukey method with a rectangular window. So there is really not, nothing more to study regarding the moving average model. So to summarize, we've seen that we can use model-based spectrum estimation in order to use a model where we estimate parameters and then derive the spectrum esti uh, estimate based on these models in order to arrive at spectrum estimation method. And if the model accurately represents the data, this can be a very powerful approach at uh, deriving accurate spectrum estimates based on the data samples that we observe. So in general, ARMA models are convenient to parameterize uh, our data because we know a lot about ARMA models. But uh, since it's hard to solve for the parameters, one often considers pure moving average or autoregressive uh, all pole uh, models. So we've just seen that the moving average models in fact lead to spectrum estimates that are equivalent to the blackman tukey estimate. So therefore there is less interest in the moving average models. But in the next video, we'll consider AR models, which is the set of models that are typically used in practice.